vacation. Uh, okay. I, so still, because only the one day is left now, so for that, I'm just trying to prepare. Yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> any any queries on the topics you have covered? Yes, sir. Actually, I have a doubt on uh, module section. Here uh, we have uh, two types of uh, modules, right? Like uh, classical modules and X modules. Yes. So, what is that? I mean. Okay. Let me tell you. Just give me a second. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I have gone through a few other topics as well, like uh, advanced topics. What is T shell and Tosca analytics and the Doku Snapper? Uh, like we will use a screenshot for as of now T box screenshot, right, sir? But whenever uh, a particular test case or test step value or test case level, we will be using T uh, T box snap Hello? screenshot. Hello. 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 Uh, sorry. No, no, actually, I was uh, uh, just connecting my headphones. Yeah, I missed whatever you have said. Okay, okay. I have gone through, I'm saying just, I have gone through a few other topics in theoretical topics. Yeah. Uh, so, a Doku Snapper, I have gone through the Doku Snapper. Like, as of now, we are using a T Box a screenshot, na, sir. So, whenever yeah. we, we will use that thing in test case level or test step value level. Or yeah. uh, test case folder level, uh, folder no, yes. So, in test case level, if we use a, a screenshot, so for that particular test case, it will take the screenshot. Yes. So, what is this Doku Snapper then? This is also the same functionality of uh, a screenshot, T box screenshot. Yes, it is the same functionality. You can say it was the old one, the Doku Snapper. Okay, we, we need to set some settings for the Doku Snapper and then it took uh, the screenshot out of it. So that was that. Same functionality, almost. Yes, yes, same, almost same functionality. It, it is for the, uh, you can say, uh, for the screenshots only. But there were something, some properties like uh, the avoid snapper and everything we, we had in the, uh, okay. we have in the Doku Snapper. So it was, you can say, more of the more of the classic module, and we, when whenever we have used that that particular classic module, it was not the X module. So T box screenshot is the X module now. Okay, T box screenshot is the X uh, related to X uh, module, huh? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. This is a Doku Snapper then. Is a yes. classical module. We, we basically used the Doku Snapper uh, in the in the classic modules when we executed the classic uh, through the classic modules, and we need to enable the Doku Snapper. Now it is a direct functionality of getting the screenshots. Okay, so we use it a T box screenshot only. So there is nothing like uh, like we just need to enable the Doku Snapper uh, like in the second settings, and that's it. We can use that. Okay. 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 Yeah. And I think uh, execution uh, module also like uh, I'm I'm still uh, right uh, still getting confusion in execution list. Uh, okay. Like as of now, I know like uh, execution we will use uh, see whenever for executing our uh, test cases or test uh, whole whole project. So at a time, if you have, if you want us to uh, check whether the application is stable or not, we will go with the execution. And this execution uh, logs will be stored. Yes. Uh, and in this, we have execution list and execution entry. Uh, so what what is meant by entry and uh, lists? Uh, execution list and execution entry. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I'm able to see. Okay. This is actually the execution list. Yes. Okay. This is execution list folder and this is execution folder. Okay. In okay. this, whatever is coming is execution entry, execution list entry. So okay. how you will get to know? Let's say.
okay so okay. you can you can see this is coming as the type execution list okay yes. and this is coming as a type execution entry okay, okay. so okay. when you go here and see the properties it is not coming right now the properties of what is what it denotes okay so i i showed you like what it types of okay so you can get the type of it like uh, which type of uh, particular element is this okay? okay so let's let's check if we have the column chooser for that mm, not the type for what what i have showed you we we have here okay so you can get it from there like what it contains so this is how it, this is structurized. This is execution list folder. This is execution folder. And this is whatever comes under the execution uh, list is the execution entry. And it can be any test cases. OK, so let's say that I just uh, drag this test case into this. Now my execution entry is this. OK, so whenever I want to search, let's say. At this level, I should show you. Okay, you can see everything uh, now. This is execution list folder, as I told you. Yes. This is execution list. This is execution entry, and this is execution log. Okay, okay. and this is something an exploratory testing folder yes. and inter interactive testing. So oh. in in the interactive testing, whatever we created as a manual test cases, okay, in which we need to interact with the with the application. Okay, we need to provide the manual uh, intervention for that. OK, so okay. that particular test cases we can put it here. Oh, OK, OK. So then interactive testing is only related to manual testing like as yes, right? yes, yes, yes. OK. OK, okay. There, there what, is, whatever okay. you have done now search operation is uh, comes under the TQL search. So yes. TQL search uh, we call for particular uh, if I, if you want to search any particular test case or so, something. So this is a powerful thing in Tosca which we can use. Yes, yes, yes. The TQL is same as like the you can say SQL. Language. Okay. It, it is a, it is a, a query language. OK, uh, yeah. on the on the TQL, let's say whatever we want to query, we want to search on a certain element. Let's say mm. if I show you there is a work state okay some has the work state as completed and let's change the work state here is in work okay. okay let's say you have 500 test cases in the test case folder you want to get the test cases which are in the in work state okay so that yes. you can filter out and you can start working on it yes so you just need to put the query language here You can directly check. Object type attributes. Work state. OK. It will search you with the work state. And when you go. The work state you can see. OK. As. In, in underscore, just directly find it. We can give like uh, braces in work. What? Can we give like a double arrow mark uh, subparts of uh, in work work state equal to in work? Yes. Okay. The... Will they ask to write these queries, sir? And then Depe depend. It depends actually. Like how much experience you are showing. Okay, so for I you. I gave like six months experience. Okay. But yeah, but I told them that I have a manual and a DB testing experience. DB testing. 
Yeah. So they will definitely ask you for writing the query. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you need to be prepared for that. Then I need to prepare for a SQL or uh, this SQL. 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 TQL is different. Like if you yeah. if you show like how much experience you have, you have more experience. Then you need to write the TQL also. Oh, okay. SQL okay. means okay. Yep. Yes, SQL language, which you yep. need to write. Okay. Just a second. I want it just hanged with this. <clears throat> and you are clear with the uh, configuration parameter, right? What yes, is that? yes, yes, yes. Great. Works status and mm, what is wrong with this? Test case has the work state. The work state has some different name test case work state. OK, that mm -hmm. you need to select and it should be equals to. And the in the quotes it will come as in work. OK, okay. then you need to close this. And uh, like this is we are comparing. So you get like these two test cases out of you, you have the 500 test cases and more. You get how much test cases are in work state. OK, so there are so many properties by which you can check what it contains and what it is not. OK, so let's okay. say this is. This is something like the work state. OK, uh, let's say you have some disabled test cases. OK. OK. So like these, these are like you can find if it is checked out by you and everything. OK, the test case is. Disabled. So these many properties you can check. OK, so if it is not disabled, let's say. This is you want to search with. Let's say there are some disabled test steps, right? Mm. Then you need to search using this. So right now you don't have any disabled test steps, so it is not coming. So if you disable, let's say something. And if you search now, it will give you this. Yes. Okay. okay, so this is how it works like um, in the in the test case in the test steps. If you have something disabled and there are so many things like mm -hmm. this is this is the advanced topic of the learning. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is about the TQL and what else? Classic modules and X engine. Yes, so modules. these are two engines. OK, classic engine and the T box engine. OK, I have showed you in the first class how it differs and what it called as. So when you start scanning the module, OK, you will see these many engines. So they are engines application is you can say the T box module the T box engine API mobile PDF host mode and this these are the in the mode. There is a web driver Salesforce and file scan and legacy. So application is the T box engine and the legacy is classic engine. When I open classic engine, let's let me open any application. OK, so.
when you see with the legacy scan. So there is a only one way of getting the properties and everything, the coordinates and all. The identify by image index was not there in the classic engine. Okay. okay. So it, we have the modified way of getting the things instead of uh, the classic engine. See, you can see this, this has some old style thing. Okay. If you want to scan, you need to click on the application what need to scan. Okay. When you click here, you need to select the engine. Okay. Which engine you want to scan? Let's say this is HTML. I will select HTML. Okay. And let T box scan automatically detects what engine it is and it works accordingly. Okay. I will show you uh, where you can select the engine also in the in the T box. It takes a little time. The old engine to start working. You can see till it is processing. Sir, one more actually I have gone through the uh, uh, theoretical topics. So yeah. CI is also advanced topic, but uh, when I've gone through uh, that topic, see, I am like, uh, I'm not understanding. It was saying like uh, integrated for integrated uh, other things we will be using C CI. So it is uh, showing examples like Jenkins and Agile. Agile means uh, how how I am using in my project. Uh, so in the same way here also it will for uh, tracking your requirements and coverage. So for those things we will be using agile. So uh, I mean what is uh, CI, CI mean particularly as so what it will if we go with uh, Jenkins or any other uh, thing other than agile. What it okay. Means? So the CI is the continuous integration. Okay. Yeah. okay. So what is continuous integration? You can you can say you you can just break the word and say this is something which is continuous and integration and integrating the things. So what we are integrating is let's say I have started uh, I have deployed something on one end one end. Okay, developer has deployed something on the other end testing will start. Okay, so this is a continuous process which is like the DevOps. OK, DevOps is a, DevOps is a continuous process which we achieve through the uh, continuous integration and we, you, you can say continuous integration and continuous deployment CI CD is the full okay. thing. Okay, OK, so we are integrating with the testing the deployment. OK, the, as, as soon as the deployment completes, the testing will start. So this we set using the continuous integration and we can schedule so there are multiple ways by scheduling something okay like the scheduling our automation we know the deployment daily deployment uh, got completed uh, by 6 a.m okay so yeah. we can set by 8 a.m my testing script should start okay so this you can set using the continuous integration and here the jenkins is the scheduler okay, okay. So Jenkins help us to integrate our Tosca with other application. Let's say the Git. Okay, let's say that the, the Tosca and Jenkins uh, integrate with other uh, tools also. Like for the any other deployment, it, it schedules one thing with the other. Let's say there are two jobs in the Jenkins. One is for the developer and second one is for the testers, right? Yeah. So when the developer got executed, the tester will Execute it. The tester job will execute. So it is interdependent also. Okay. So this means of continuous integration is a continuous process in a very okay. uh, in a very small term and a very simple term. I must say it is a continuous process which help us like to execute. Let's say I have some uh, I have some regression back. 
ओके रिग्रेशन पैक आई हैव मेड इट इनटू द ऑटोमेशन व्हेन आई एग्जीक्यूट आई वांट टू एग्जीक्यूट द रिग्रेशन पैक डेली टू चेक लाइक व्हाटएवर इज चेंज इन द इन द इन द एप्लीकेशन बाय बाय द डेवलपर बाय द डिप्लॉयमेंट इज नॉट अफेक्टेड माय ओल्ड एप्लीकेशन राइट सो आई शेड्यूल माय रिग्रेशन पैक डेली एट द नाइट एट 11 पीएम इट शुड एग्जीक्यूट माय particular regression pack so that when i comes into the morning i will be i will be sure that my application is working fine it is not disturbed with the new deployment new build okay okay so you cannot come and you cannot execute when you are not on your system so yes. we need to schedule this thing so how to schedule how to make the things interdependent is jenkins will help us okay so there is also a process which i will tell you how to set up the continuous integration okay okay so one is continuous integration and second is distributed execution okay, okay. so distributed execution is like let's say you are executing your execution list okay uh just a second i got a noise so there are four let's say execution list you have okay okay one is prepared by you one is by by your colleague and something like that and let's say you one is for the regression one is for the smoke okay and you want to execute both of the execution list at the same time on your system so when you are on your system it will not execute at the same time you cannot open two browser and work accordingly like two different functionalities are checking on the same system right so in this case of executing you can say this as a parallel execution parallel execution of the multiple execution list you can achieve it using the distributed execution so now again break the word distributed execution so it distributes the execution on the different servers okay Okay. okay. So he here the servers and the virtual machines you can say help us to execute our certain script on their machine. Okay, they help us just to execute our script on their machine, and parallelly we can work on our machine. Okay, so it is on the server side we are executing on our execution list instead of instead of running it on our system. so okay. continuous integration we can achieve it on our system also on the pod server also but distributed okay. but distributed execution you cannot achieve it on your system on your local machine okay right so because the purpose of distributed execution is the parallel execution the parallel execution means two or more different things are executing parallelly Okay. So yeah, this is it about the distributed execution and continuous integration. Now you got it. So there are different settings, different uh, everything is different in terms of uh, the execution and getting the things. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Here some construction yes, yes. is going on, mm -hmm. so that's why yes, I'm yes, on yes. mute. Yeah. So you can see this classic engine as you can see there are the right now the no element has scanned here. Let me scan a region.
so there is some error coming i am not able to show you okay it is also taking time okay it is not scanning the things actually i don't know why means it will retrieve a code sir our html page and inspect i mean inspect a page or uh, what it will do so uh, yeah what what uh, i can see it retreats and get all the elements what we have in the uh, in the html code okay, okay. Yeah. okay and whatever the functionality is defined there let's say this is a link okay mm -hmm. so it should be considered as a link okay it got it should got the link what we can see in the the href is the property for the link okay if okay. it is attached to uh, attached to that particular property the tosca should get it and this is how it works the tosca get those these properties only when okay. you see when you see in the register page okay so there are so many properties you can see in the right left so all these properties Tosca got it into uh, into its uh, page. Okay, we just need to make it unique whenever we need to when we need to work on it. Okay, this this functionality is provided by the Tosca. And that's the properties you can see. There is a href is coming. Okay. Yes. Against the href, there is a when I hover on it, there is a particular link attached to this particular register. Okay. Yes. Yes. If let's say developer change this link. Mm. slash register to slash login when you click on the register it will go to the login page okay so that particular thing we need to check through the automation because it is just giving us a structure like what it has the register login shopping cart but in the testing we need to verify we uh, okay and we need to validate what is coming is correct or not as expected to the business or not okay Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I have gone through like um, worksheet, workbook, and uh, worksheets, sir. So we, uh, I mean, using T box worksheet, we will be, I mean, uploading or uh, a worksheet from external source. So I mean, external means from our desktop. What is the uh, use of that Excel? I mean, are we doing test cases or uh, any running uh, test cases uh, running or creating on those Excel sheets? Why we will use those Excel? Excels. So there can be multiple use of Excels, right? Okay. One is let's say your application is working in such a way. After creating all the IDs, all the registration, admin can go log in with it uh, particular credentials. Okay, and admin can see how many registration is completed. Yes. Okay. There, yes. the functionality is enabled to download the particular registrations happened on the page. So when you download, you will get a Excel out of it. Okay. Okay. To verify the Excel. We have certain modules, okay, T box Excel engine. We have to steer the Excel. Let's say I have you have Excel of the test data. There you got so many order IDs and okay. I need I need to verify and I need to get those because I, I you cannot put it directly because you have in your Excel. You cannot yes. directly put it and create the buffer out of it, right? Yes. You need to get it from the Excel, which is there on your system. And you need to automate this process. Okay, so one way is verifying the Excel. Second is getting the values from the Excel. Let's say that you have multiple order IDs. You can you will steer the particular Excel. You can get the element according to the usage of it. How to steer the Excel? There is a different topic. Okay, so you need to get the element out of it. Then you need to uh, save it on the buffer, or you can directly use it using the Excel steering. Okay, then you will process the order ID according to this page functionality. Okay, let's say I want to verify in this order ID there is only two products should come. Okay, let's say if two product is should come and one is missing and only one is coming. Then there is a defect and then we need to judge how it should be. So the data is coming into the Excel. Okay, we verify the data into the Excel. This is two things. And the third thing is whenever we want to achieve the test driven development and the test driven testing. 
okay which is called as tdd you have heard about like bdd tdd okay the bdd is behavior driven development development and tdd is test data driven development okay okay so to, to achieve that particular thing we use the excel one way of using the excel using the test data and second way is using the test de case design folder okay okay here you can replicate your whole excel into the test design sheet the you can say the excel is the third party tool and test design sheet is internal tool in the tosca which you can uh, use it using the uh, for achieving the test driven development okay 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 yeah so uh, for for the excel steering you can say when you go in the tbox engine and in the excel there is a certain modules which we can use using the excel steering that we'll going to learn okay hello yeah okay sir okay sir so yeah this is i think this is it about your queries so let's go with the next topic we have covered this is buffers and everything yep okay almost uh, they will go by theoretical uh, topics only right sir in tosca i mean interview it, everything depends on the interview you okay. cannot judge actually even if i will go i cannot judge what they will ask okay okay so once they have asked me the permutation and combination to implement the permutation and combination in the tosca so you cannot imagine what they will going to ask yes yes right you just need to show the approach what you will approach and how you will do okay so there are so many things which goes deeply like there are there are so many different ways why you can manipulate the data in the tosca only so tell me the three ways by which you can put the value here in your registration page Okay. okay fill the registration for form tell me the three ways by which you can put the value here first name yes by using buffers and by test step values we will be giving value yes and uh, even test case design also we will be giving a detailed data right so we can drag that data as well here to test that particular case yeah and i think you are saying some excel right maybe through excel also we can get the data just through excel also and what you feel whatever you have learned till now Do they do we have any other way? Like manually, we are giving here as of now for but uh, I mean through scan by scanning the application. No, no, scanning is a different part. Okay, operations are different part. Yes. So this this is the operations. Yes. The like clicking on it, providing the value. So mm -hmm. we can also provide the value through configuration parameter, through buffer. Okay. through excel through test case design okay. okay so this many ways and direct value okay? okay so there are more multiple ways let's say the tdm the tds by which you can get the value okay okay so you need to know which is best suitable for you for getting the values right yes yeah so here right now i am just for for telling you about this thing i am just providing it directly what if i want to reuse the same thing 
Okay. So what should be our best approach? Okay. So that we will going to learn slowly. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is about the interview only. Just you need to know like what is what is the approach. So mm -hmm. as I as I told you yesterday about the setting, getting, and reusing the buffer. Now you oh. will you will never forget. Like whenever you uh, someone will ask, let's say I have set a buffer, okay, by by putting the values in the T box set buffer. How I will reuse? Okay, so reuse is only one thing. Curly braces B and the buffer name. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. And if I go in another way, like not setting the through the T box set buffer, I am setting the buffer value on the element. Let's say here. Okay, using the action mode as buffer. Then how I will reuse this value? Okay, so hmm. when I interview someone, okay, so this is this seems confusing for them, but it is it is not confusing. There are multiple ways of getting the buffer. Setting the buffer, but there is only one way of reusing the buffer. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you need to be clear yes. on things. Okay. So yeah, this is about uh, the buffer we have already covered. Okay, the work state you need to know, like you need to set it as complete whenever you st uh, whenever you stopped working and you have completed your working. Okay. This you need to set as completed. So let's go with weights. So we have two types of weights, okay? Implicit and explicit. Okay, so what is weight? Weight is we are waiting for some element to appear, right? Hello. We are getting an element. We are waiting. Okay, we are waiting for okay. an element to appear. That's that is why, like the name is already justified the thing. Yes. Okay. That is why we use the weight. Okay. So. How many ways we can use the weight? Okay, and uh, what is it? So there are two types of weight. One is implicit, and second is explicit weight. Okay, so what is implicit weight? Implicit weight is you are implicitly telling the Tosca to wait for the some time for the element to appear. Okay, so how to use the implicit weight? Let's use this first. In the test case, I have created two folders, which is defi defining certain functionalities, okay, and dividing the functionalities. One is for the implicit weight. And second is for the explicit weight. Explicit weight. weight and weight on is different, sir, or are both the same? Both are different. So let me tell you, let me cover this. Yeah, okay. Okay, so implicit weight we use for the implicit weight in the timing you go. There mm -hmm. is a T box weight. Yes. Okay. So it takes the value in the milliseconds. Let's say if this is 5000 milliseconds means you need to provide you need to wait for the five seconds. Mm. Yes. Okay, so the action mode will be input only, and you can see the data type is coming as numeric. It, the data type is numeric means you are bounding the particular element to use a certain structure only, the certain values only, which has numeric values only. Okay, this is the use of data type to defining an element to use a certain type of data into the values only. Okay, 
so we have string date numeric boolean password got it okay so you can see in the other uh, we what whatever we have scanned it okay so there is a string type okay so here you can provide the numeric values also and the text also in the password it will encrypt the password and treat it as a security thing and it will not expose the password okay yeah. the string contains everything whenever you will use the boolean it will just take the true and false yes okay and the date you know it will consider the dates formats only that's that's how it works okay so using the implicit wait you are telling the tosca to wait for the 5 seconds okay so let's say this is only a step and i am executing this so this will take 5 seconds to execute and complete the execution okay so let's execute this so you can see this execution took the 5 seconds to execute okay there is no steps yes so now let me take some steps click on the register click on the login let's say not register i will use this step we are clicking on login okay we are waiting for 5 minutes so what the use case is whenever we are clicking on the login it will wait for 5 minutes to appear this okay then we will verify if the login appears this button mm. okay let's quickly scan this Sorry, I forgot to show you one thing. Let's execute, rescan this again. So I've selected the T box engine now. Okay, to scanning a certain page. This is my page I need to scan, right? Hello. I'm I'm talking on mute, sir. Yes. Okay. A demo web shop. So demo web shop, I need to select right. Yes. So when you right click, you will see the options of this engines. Okay, there is a HTML engine. Then there is a Vision AI, which okay. is a Vision AI is uh, you can say uh, the artificial intelligence engine. Okay. 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 So artificial intelligence is like uh, whatever you can see. Uh, through your eyes, it will get the elements like that only. You know the artificial intelligence. Okay, it, it behaves like the human. Okay. 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 Look and feel. Huh? Yes. Okay. So mostly with that. Okay. So uh, there are some different uh, look. Uh, uh, let's say in different technologies. There is a different way of defining a particular element. Okay, so as you can see, there is a drop down. Mm. But in the HTML5, the drop down can be looked as a uh, looked as a drop down, but it is a container. It it can be a container. So you cannot take it as a drop down. You cannot create the properties as a drop down. But when you scan it with the UI engine, it will treat it as a drop down only. Okay. Okay. So, 
this these are the uh, the engines we have the html vision ai uia and any ui so uia is something let's say which is not stable let's say with the with the html okay let's say when you download something on the web page there is a different bar comes into the down side okay yes if you if you want to save and if you want to download something like that yes okay so this is now comes uh, this is now comes uh, beyond the html engine okay it is because it is not it is not a page it is a property of the chrome yes okay this is the pop up for, for the chrome so to different the to to get the element with its control type okay what it its control type like the wh however it it has appearing like on the page apart from any of the engine you can get it using the ui engine okay oh. which which is not stable let's say with the html engine is with the specific engine you can use the ui engine for that okay Okay. And then there is any UI which can be anything like if it is not HTML, if it is Java, if it is Python, and anything, then it will automatically automatically select the application. But in case you want to select any other UI, and then there is a blacklist application which we haven't used, and it means that if there is something which is which is you have blacklisted and you want to scan it now, it contains that. Okay. so this many options you can select using using like while scanning okay they are constantly developing the vision ai now okay you okay. can see in the 14.2 version there is a more advanced way of using the vision ai vision ai we are okay. using okay so it, this is their their name of the artificial intelligence name as vision ai vision ai okay so when you scan it this particular login page Okay, so every every value is fine. Yeah. You whatever the value you saw there on the on the inspect element, you can see here. Yes. Okay. Yes. These are technical properties. This is transition properties, which is the X path you need to define if you want. This is representational. What is the look and feel? Okay. Okay. The coordinates. And everything. Yes. And if this will not work, then you can load all properties, which will give you the deeper view of the elements and uh, the element properties, whatever it is using. Okay. So now you can see these many properties we have, with uh, related with the color, with the size, and everything. You can have it here. Okay. 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 so we have chose whatever is useful for us okay and then now we have saved it this is the i'm using this login user in the email i am providing the email in the password i am providing the password here okay so i think there is no use of it the of logging certain user so what it will do it will click on the login and it will wait for the 5 seconds and then it will provide the input values of the login user right so let's execute this and see how much time it will take to execute
Okay, so it waited and the whole test case took the 11 seconds to do a certain thing. Okay, let's put it as a verification point instead of this. Okay. You want to verify if login appears. Okay, so how you will do it? In the value, there is another uh, down arrow which where you need to click. You need to select dot exist is equals to true. You, you can use only Boolean values and the verification mode should be verify. OK, if you want to verify the existence of a particular element, so you can see there are four properties here. The exist enabled inner text and visible. OK, the enabled will also show you if it is enabled or disabled. OK. okay. That also use the Boolean function true and false. This is I am showing it to you. Visible is also if it is visible on the page or not visible. The true and false. Okay. okay. The in, inner text will work as uh, like you can see in the properties when we scan it. There are certain prop, uh, certain values in the inner text, right? Yes. Yes. If we want to verify that particular value, okay, of the yeah. inner text value, what it contains actually, apart from its look and feel. So you can use the inner text value as yeah. a verification point. OK, as a verification point and, and you want to verify the inner text property, whatever it has. OK, let's say this is registration is coming here, but in the inner text, just assume it is not there, but in the inner text, there is a link for the registration. OK, yes, so the whole link that I want to get it so how you will get it from this page you, because only registered is coming here all right so to get that we use the uh, inner text right okay so this is one thing we are ex we are verifying if this exists true or not after clicking on the login okay Just we are verifying only login page, right, sir? Not a username and password. Yes, we are verifying the existence of login button. Login button. If login button will appear, it means the page is coming. This is yes. just that. Okay. So you can see it is verifying. The verification is successful. The expected is true. It should come and it is coming. So the true and uh, the actual value is true. OK. OK. So this is what we have verified and it took just a second. Okay. Hello. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Sir. So we are waiting uh, it ex it uh, executed in some 11 seconds or something like that. OK, and okay. we are waiting for this. But if we execute this, the two steps. OK, because yes. my application is not slow. OK, it is working fine. OK, so when I execute this, so my purpose is to show you 
like what we are doing we are clicking on the login and then we are if let's say my application is slow it is taking time to load the application page mm. okay that time i am waiting for 5 seconds because i know in the 5 second the page will load okay but it is sometime executed this fast okay like in 4 seconds only so we are we are waiting unnecessarily 5 more seconds mm. right sometimes it can be like the servers is upgraded and it is working fine okay your application is no uh, no more slow okay your application is working fine so you are using the implicit wait and you are reducing it by using the you are you are making it this application to wait for the 5 seconds okay let's say you have used you have executed a pack of 100 test cases mm. okay where you have used the 5 seconds okay in each test cases so it will take 500 seconds extra to execute your uh, particular thing right your particular uh, suite you you will take 500 seconds more to execute that so is it a good way to mm. work on any application the opt- optimized way don't you think you can utilize that 500 second is too much you know yes when it comes to the big picture yes so in this case the explicit name comes into the picture okay so the explicit name implicit wait uh, uh, sorry implicit wait and explicit wait implicit wait we are using using the t box wait okay and the explicit wait we use using the action mode as wait on okay now the wait on comes into the picture so let's say i am using this the same thing i will just copy and paste it here okay so i will remove this implicit wait okay what i will do instead of verify i will put wait on as action mode got it okay so what it will do i am clicking on the login okay i am verifying the existence of the particular login so wait on has the two properties not only waiting for the element but it will wait it will wait for certain time as soon as the element will appear it will verify also <coughs> okay as in the x buffer the verify was doing the two things it is it was verifying the certain format as as well as it was getting the buffer out of it like that the wait on has two properties it verifies a particular thing and it store uh, and it wait for the uh, for some time okay as soon as the application and as the element will appear it will execute that okay so let's execute this particular thing using the wait on and see how much time it will take okay we are waiting also and we are verifying also okay sir in that uh, case i uh, mean in the same test case uh, can we put wait and wait on see again it comes to your use case okay so while you are using the implicit wait there is no use of putting the wait on and when you are using the wait on there is no use of using the wait uh, implicit wait okay so let's say i am using the wait on here mm-hmm. okay just a second Yeah. Okay. I got a noise here. So, you are waiting for this particular element to appear, right? This is your purpose. Then why you need to put the implicit wait here also? You can use no issue in that. But what is the use? You can use that. is it really useful and optimized way to work the question arises okay as soon as you start working like this okay. okay so we need to think 
we need to clear with our vision what we will going to have and how this will impact later in the future if i will start using this okay from the scratch of the project you need to think like that then you will be able to develop a good automation script okay so i am not i am this is resolving my purpose okay i am verifying something mm. so sometimes let's say there is some conditions when there is the wait on is not the wait on will not work okay let's say you are closing the application you are closing the browser yep. okay after the browser nothing will come okay so just for your satisfaction let's say your system is slow your system is not working well okay you want to wait for some time so that it will you will be sure and when you execute your script your browser is closed maximum yeah. time it will how it will take the 10 seconds right yes. even if the system is slow yes because there is no verification point after the browser is closed okay then you need to use the implicit wait then that is fine okay mm -hmm. like you are opening the browser as soon as you open the browser there is a element up will start appearing and then you don't need to wait for the particular time let's say the 5 second or 10 second okay that the element is appearing you just use the wait on as soon as the element will appear let's say your internet is fast your system is fast it appears in 5 seconds only mm. so it will just verify that and it will wait for that time only okay so wait on is also we are waiting but we have a limitation of the maximum time to wait here okay the Somebody maximum can. yes for the wait on let's say you can modify that i will show you so so implicit wait is i am telling the tosca to wait for the 5 seconds mm. anyhow if the element is appearing or not appearing not appearing yes. in the wait on we are telling the tosca to appear for a certain time as soon as the element appear okay and wait okay. only 15 seconds till 15 seconds <coughs> sorry so wait on is like is the maximum time it will wait for the 15 seconds only if the element is not appearing then it will fail i will show you about this login let's say okay let's put it as false okay and i am expecting this as a false it should not appear on this page but now this is exist so this will verify and uh, let's execute this Okay, so my task is got failed in twenty seconds. You can see, it took around twenty seconds to uh, uh, wait for this element. Okay, you can see here this is twenty seconds, right? Mm. So we are maximum time we are waiting for twenty seconds only. If in that particular time, if this appear is as, as true, then it will verify. if it is not true then it will fail mm. got it so this is the maximum time we are waiting so now where is the maximum time we need to set for the wait on where is that time okay so in the projects in the settings sorry in the t box okay we have a synchronization folder okay. okay in the synchronization you will see synchronization timeout during wait on which is 20 second okay let's set it as 15 seconds okay 
and close this and the same thing execute the same thing again and see how much time it will wait the maximum time OK, so you see. Now the execution time is 15 seconds. Mm. OK, not the 20 seconds. Yes. So we are limiting the maximum time. It should wait for the 15 seconds only maximum to wait for the limit. If it is not, then there is there might be an issue in the application that we need to investigate through the execution log. Right. OK. Yes, so this is how you are using the implicit weight and explicit weight. Using the T box weight and the action mode as weight on. OK. OK. So now you got it, the, the usage of the weight on and uh, the usage of the implicit weight. Then explicit weight. OK. OK, so right now i'm covering this much only i need to show because uh, the summer is not here in the class so we need to repeat again everything and then we need to go with the synchronization policy like how we can synchronize with the application using this weight okay 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 so just remember one thing okay because i showed you because this can be the next question as soon as you will see the action mode as weight on what you you now I, I hope you will define it very well. What is the wait on? OK, what is the use of it? And then the next question is where you will set your wait on time. It should be in the settings. OK, OK, and the T box. There is a synchronization folder. Here you will see the synchronization timeout during wait on. Okay. The synchronization folder synchronization timeout during wait on which you need to set. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, yes. we have wait and wait on now we are explicitly defining a 50 seconds, 15 seconds. Yes. That means uh, if our application, uh, we are setting our application in that 15 seconds, if it is not going to load means something is issued there uh, that we check through logs. Is that only, I mean, uh, loading the objects on that particular time yes. whether our application is stable or not as expected in that particular time it should load our uh, page with all elements is that the meaning yes this okay. is it okay okay so we are waiting for some time maximum 15 seconds okay that are uh, all the elements are visible and loaded on the screen that we okay. use the wait um, that we use the wait on time not the verify okay because we are waiting as well as we are verifying at the same time yes right okay. and in the implicit wait you are implicitly and forcefully you can see waiting for the five seconds they yeah, we are defining implicitly means if we are defining there means we are testing a particular screen or particular page we want to see whether every screens or everything is displaying as expected or not so to check our screens or pages we are doing a implicitly we are using implicitly wait yes implicit wait if uh, like implicitly forcefully we are waiting for five seconds to verify if the element is loaded or not. Again here also elements are okay or not. Yes, okay. because, because we are in the implicit weight also we are verifying. We are verifying this existence of this particular thing, right? Yes, but before that we are waiting for five seconds because we are not sure if the application is working fine or not. The or is Internet is stable or not. Mm. This is okay. the case. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Again, I'll go through these topics from the yeah. beginning of the class, and uh, I'll go. I'll just try through 
this i mean theoretical topics whatever i have if i have a doubt i can ping you right sir on yes yes definitely definitely you can ping or if see i usually don't see every time the whatsapp you can directly call yeah sure sure so okay. as of now i mean uh, uh, i have to check with sequel once again my queries uh, yes. and then uh, these our i mean whatever till now we have discussed all the calls uh, in all the calls the application i mean our tool how it will work and if any i don't know but i'll go with the theoretical topics yeah i'll try 